Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sandeep Sharma, your Pediatrics Super Speciality Faculty at Prep Ladder. So the INI SS exam is on 29th of April. Just a few weeks are left before the exam. So I am going to make it a very crisp session. I'll keep it short, but I'll talk something which is relevant for your exam. So first thing, the general advice that I want to give it to you. Do not try to read cover to cover in the last one month. The time for that is gone. Nobody can and that is what you shouldn't. So now is not the time that you open the first page of Nelson or try to read the chapters which you have never read. That time is gone. It is now time to consolidate areas which are frequently asked, things which are frequently asked and you have read but you are not confident enough, you are supposed to focus there. Secondly, do not try to read rare syndromes or topics in the last one month. If a question on a rare syndrome is asked, suppose you get a question on Abracadabra syndrome. There is no such syndrome. But suppose you get a question like this. Eventually, the person who will be getting rank 1, he will also not have an idea. He or she will not have an idea. So, your aim should be on increasing the accuracy and increasing your you know, strike rate in the important topics, important syndromes. The most important ones like Down, Edward, Patau, you have to read. In addition, the syndromes which we sometimes ignore but are asked in the exam, syndromes related to craniosynostosis, syndromes related to micro deletion, syndromes associated with pediatric epilepsies, syndromes associated with certain specific congenital heart diseases. These are the areas you should be focusing on and consolidating. And don't go into much detail. Syndrome, two or three components, if any triad, tetrad or pentad is present, that thing. And what is the unique type of mutation happening in that particular syndrome? That's all. Touch the key topics which have not been revised. Suppose you have done neonatology very well, but you haven't revised neonatal jaundice in the last four or five or six months. So even if I know that your grasp of the topic is good, make it a point to go through the AIMS NICU protocol of that uh, neonatal jaundice at least once, even if it is for 15 minutes. Consolidate high yielding topics. It is time for you to strengthen your strengths even more. Weaknesses you have to work upon, but don't let your strength turn into weakness by not revising. Fourth thing is be thorough with the AIMS protocols. AIMS newborn protocol, Pura Padna, you have to read everything in that. AIMS PICU protocol, I know it is tricky, it is difficult if you have not read it before, try to read important topics which have been asked from this, topics like ARDS, topics like snake poisoning, scorpion envenomation, topics like uh, dengue management. These are the areas you should be reading if you cannot read cover to cover, but a lot of questions directly indirectly are asked in INICET from the AIMS protocols. And also every year, there are at least two questions from EBG directly and indirectly one is a numerical and one is a list based kind of question. So be thorough with AIMS protocol and image analysis. You will not regret that. Lastly, when you sit for the exam, when you prepare for the exam, your attempt should be on the higher side because even if you get a very distant rank, you, you may not get a seat of your choice. So it's time to, you know, push your boundaries at the same time only omit and you know leave the topic if you have never even heard about it even if a syndrome comes and you have you don't even know what system it belongs to and they are asking you the gene for that and you have options like chromosome 7 chromosome 10 chromosome 20 chromosome 21 not heard at all no system involvement known leave such kind of question because 75 percent chance you may get it wrong so in a negative marking on a portion you need to keep that in mind right so apart from that if the negative marking is not there obviously you know it makes sense to attempt the whole paper so keep that aspect in mind and areas which are not to be missed during the revision part so this is based upon what has been asked in INISS in the last three or four papers like INISS as well as the AIMS and PGI past papers of super speciality based upon the what students have suggested, the toppers have suggested, the interviews which I have taken. You may or may not get anything, but it always makes sense to go through the, at least these topics uh, along with your preparation, whatever you are doing, take out 15 minutes per day and try to cover all these topics so that at least you have some confidence going. So common genetic syndromes, I've already told you, childhood poisoning is very important. Every year, every INICT has one or two questions on childhood poisonings, ventilator graphs, the basics also, and the abnormal graphs also. For example, ARDS related graphs you need to go through. The images also you need to go through. That CPAP, BPD, spirometry, they have been asked every time in one way or the other in the past three exams. 
including the previous exam and the exam before that they have been asked the nephrotic vaccines muscular dystrophies aims people are very fond of putting questions on these and uh, staging system nec hie rop have been repeatedly asked in the past sometimes as images sometimes as case scenario sometimes as one liners or a component of each then latest monoclonal antibodies drugs are often asked in the inict exam or anti epileptic drugs the latest ones the older ones and their specific side effects like there was a question in the previous exam which of the following anti epileptic drug is associated with autistic like side effects in certain children so that kind of a accuracy you need to you know read then uh, fetal monitoring and antenatal procedures from cloverty is very important especially if you are targeting neonatology you have to go through it in case you sit for departmental assessment again you will be asked things related to it even if it is not the core neonatology it is related to the antenatal part and that is why this is going to be helpful for you and uh, give the dsd dsd is a difficult topic disorders of sexual differentiation a lot of you have requested me to put something on it i will try my best to put a small summary video of this before you sit for the exam but at your end you are supposed to revise it properly hiv neco 21 guidelines and the blood products and their uses blood products and their uses will include your ivig platelet preparation your uh, platelet concentrate what is the amount how do you store what is the storage temperature difference and the usual ones differences between fresh frozen plasma versus cryo precipitate sometimes as easy questions as cryo precipitate will not be useful in which hemophilia hemophilia b because it does not have factor 9 you would laugh ki sir ye kaise question this has been asked in the past in inict don't get questions like this wrong right so you need to get the blood product thing going hematology the focus often is on sickle cell anemia sickle thalassemia is sometimes asked but the focus is usually on sickle cell anemia and the blood products and their related indications storage etc and then the celiac disease of perennial favorite of aims examiners congenital pulmonary malformation last paper had three questions the previous one had one question so this is a high yielding topic go through it it's a boring topic sequestration cpam also called as cam and all these things low bar sequestration etc you need to go through them once congenital low bar emphysema how you are going to identify you may get images you may get case scenarios of this so practice them there are uh, videos which i have recorded on triplader also you can go through them as well and common congenital heart disease x rays ecg findings in them hus pediatric epilepsy it's vast you don't need to go into too much of details but at least go through the important pediatric epilepsies and uh, when you read the pediatric epilepsies it's not only absence seizure west syndrome juvenile myoclonic epilepsy lennox gastaut that you will be reading in addition also try to read about the febrile seizures if possible go through the latest febrile seizure eoc and update certain definitions are different from that given in nelson they have been updated and also go through the related syndromes so like landau kleffner syndrome neuroregression disorders and which of the disorders are associated with epilepsy and which are not so those kind of disorders in pediatric neurology you should be focusing and uh, last but not the least in every paper there is one question on pediatric vasculitis sometimes two so both kawasaki hsp you need to do sle again frequently asked in the exam imnci and abdominal wall defects when i say abdominal wall defect not not only on phallocene and gastroschisis but also your wall defects associated with the bladder abnormalities like your uh, cloacal exostrophy etc all the, you you need to you know just go through them what say but i know you have prepared well but it would be useful to get that confidence going if you have read certain topics very close to the exam and you get questions from that you mark them correctly trust me your momentum builds up in the paper in exam also in cricket momentum is very important so get that momentum going end of the day it will all come down to a bit of luck also but give your best shot and don't worry exam will be same for everyone answer will be written there keep that at the back of your mind if you have read it somewhere your instinct will also go correct so wishing you all the best as soon as the exam is done i hope i'll be taking interviews of some of you and feel free to ask if you have any specific doubts thank you very much